Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another Firestorm podcast. It's been quite a while since we've actually... Holy shit. Graced your ears. We had a guest episode with Hypertoria. We had our amazing in-person episode. And then before that, we sp uh, spoke about Free Run. And now we're here speaking about another anime that's... Uh, I would like to say it's uh, hit 2024 quite well. It... it did run for most of it. it. Ran from April to September. Um, yeah, we here to talk about solid half the year. Yeah, no, oh, actually, very good half the year. Exactly. We here to talk about Spice and Wolf Merchant meets the Wise Wolf. Wow! It. A, you guys a lot know of... whose idea this was? Can you can you guess? <laughs> can you guess? Anyone know whose I which one of us two's idea this was? I mean, not the guy that's Anyone? been uh, liking every single post about Spice and Wolf Anyone? and retweeting stuff and uh, ordering a lot of stuff. And, uh, you know, it's not totally not. You have been ordering a lot of stuff. I have been ordering a lot of stuff. It's it's nuts. It's me! One of them went through me. <laughs> yes, exactly. I, I, I Before we properly get into things, I have, a, I have a lot to talk about, guys. I have a lot to talk about. But I really want to give massive props to Gus, uh, for many reasons, especially this year alone. Uh, well, right now, he's up 20 minutes after he just got up to record this episode of the podcast oh, yeah. with me. Uh, I am, I'm, I'm living right now. <laughs> he is, he is living. He is I am wide chilling. awake. I'm um, big chilling. Yeah. Th this year alone, bro, like, he let me start his place in America. He drove me all around the place. He has... It, one of my few mates that have actually read my strip, my fucking book, like I have a whole heap of friends that say they will and never do. He's actually done that and offered I, a lot of critiques to read. help improve it. So I appreciate that. Reading is, yeah, reading is, I do that anyway. <laughs> exactly. So it's just yeah, someone else's I'm shit living. work to read. And on top of all that, mm -hmm. yeah, he's recently been acting like a proxy service for me because, <laughs> um, yeah, the end press announced the. Yeah, they re-released the Spice and Wolf Anniversary Collector's Edition. Uh, I think this is like mm. the second time they re-released it. And uh, yep. it was only shipping to US and Canada. So I was like, all right, uh, yeah. hey guys, <laughs> can you help me yep. out? Yeah, and I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Like, you know, obviously I'm not going to take the financial hit for it. So I was like, whatever, I'll just take it. I'll do it right now. Um, and so, I sent you the money on the, on the yes. dot. Yes, I still need to... Uh, I s I still need to actually go and ship the thing, but because um, I was waiting on you to confirm your address. But yeah, um, I'll ship it today uh, once I before I go into work, probably. Wonderful. So, <clears throat> absolutely yeah. wonderful. It'll be he has uh, it. We'll, he has it we'll, right now. Yeah, I do. I'm. It's uh, somewhere in my in my room. Um, there it is. Uh, yeah. So uh, <laughs> this is a big old fucking thing. It's huge. <laughs> Um, it is weighs. I think it weighs like seven pounds or something like that. It, seven and a half pounds or some shit like that. I think is what it said on the Yen Press website, which is crazy wow. for a book. So Indeed. I want to say that's like for yeah for reference. It's like I I want to say like three three and a half ish kilograms. Um, mm -hmm. it's it's a big old book. Um, so <clears throat> it it's uh, but it's it's got all seventeen volumes in it. Which is pretty impressive. Exactly. So, must be a lot of words on a page. So. I, well, I think it's like just under a thousand pages because of the, the size of the book. They mm -hmm. obviously were able to fit a lot more words onto those pages. So yes. It's, it's, a, it's a hefty, hefty chonker. So, because yeah, hopefully I, I, the shipping <laughs> doesn't turn out to be too bad. I'm afraid that it might. <laughs> That's, I'll cop it, man. It's fine. I knew what I was getting into when I asked you yeah. to do this. So I was uh, looking. I was looking at like because I'm gonna just go to the ship like a uh, UPS or USPS or something like that, just in store. Um, and I was looking at like rates and stuff. And I'm like, ooh, ooh, <laughs> Ow, yeah, ouch. No. Overseas shipping, bro. Fuck that. So uh, yeah. Yeah, luckily I get paid tomorrow, so this will kind of uh, nice. help me out. That will help me out yeah. tremendously. Um, anyway, today, or at least yesterday for you, I believe, uh, yes. Spice and Wolf Merchant Meets the Wise Wolf has concluded uh, 25 episodes. Uh, it's covered volumes one to four of the light novel, um, which 
is wow. very like that, that's actually quite significant considering the original skipped over volume four in the season season two they had two seasons it Season two covered volumes three and five. They actually skipped over four with the whole church huh. arc. So mm-hmm. that's the whole reason they released that, that new visual with uh, the two people, right. the, the two peeps in the back, because it was quite significant for everyone. And um, yeah, it was honestly, it, it, it took me back. Wait, it, Evan and Elsa are their names. Ha! I'm well just, I got it. Thank you. You got them. Oh, you got, you got I him. did. You, Holy you shit. Him. Wow. Thank you. I was trying Thank to remember their names. I know to, it's, a, it's a running gag on all of the seasonal roundup videos I do I, that I remember nobody's names. Oh. So, yeah. I mean, you can't, can, I, can I really help it when I'm covering like 30 anime at a time? But no, still. Definitely not. <laughs> definitely not. It, it, you are allowed to have faults, and that is one yep. of them. That is, that is completely understandable. Um, so I just look, I just like go on Mal and like look up people's names, like, oh my God, what's, what's her name? Fuck. Um, so I'm just like well, in the middle of recording doing that. Well, thankfully, you, you, I just watched the last episode yesterday, so it's fresh on my mind. Yes. If you were uh, a fan back in like 2009, th- 2010, uh, there was confusion over the name Holo because uh, I think one of the translations translated to Horo, like H O R. Yeah, that's that's a notorious thing because the Japanese like R sound is somewhere in between R, our English R and L. So yeah. some like the, it's a translator's choice to like uh, how they. Uh, if they make it an R or an L really like it, it usually doesn't matter too much. So that, that doesn't surprise me that back in the era of like fan subs and shit <laughs> that no yeah. one really knew what to do with that. True. Yeah. It luckily it's been clarified, but you can still see like a few old forum posts with horror and it's like, damn, that's weird. It's not correct. It's just horror. Doesn't matter. Um, yep. Yeah, so it has recently concluded and, I, I tell you what, it was a, it wasn't just a nostalgia hit. Like from it, from the start, it was a massive nostalgia hit. But studio, uh, now how do you pronounce stu- the Passion or Passion Passion? Oh Passion, shit! Like, You're gonna have to give me a second while I look at it. Yeah, because um, wh- whatever that studio is, um, I know they're 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 have only been in production like ten something years. Like they're they're in regards to the realm of yeah, like anime. Just be Passion, something like Passion. It could even just be Passion. Like passion because it, it ends with an e, e after so it's like passion. Yeah, just had could so. could just end in e. Yeah, it's just might yeah. be weird. Who knows? I'll say studio. I'll say studio passion. Like they, they've been. You know, I think they've only been in production like nearly ten years, and they've done a fair few amount of shows. Like I think they took over like High School DxD for season four, and they they've done a lot of stuff recently. But this like Spice and Wolf, they it looked gorgeous yeah. in my opinion um oh yeah it one, looks really good one, one thing i think a lot of anime studios don't get enough credit for like because like there's one thing to have good looking characters but there's another thing to have like really rich and bright vibrant and inter- and like interesting backgrounds and like landscapes and i think they like it looks tremendous spice and wolf is like built for that as a show considering the Mm. premise of traveling around so it has it gives the opportunity to make landscapes like that and i think that's one thing the re that uh, some people are calling this a remake it's not really a remake it's a new adaptation it's a reboot is what it is reboot reboot of the show yeah yeah, the the reboot, the the 2024 version, uh, it looks phenomenal, and I think mm, yes, uh, one thing they've definitely excelled on, and I think you can agree, because I remember sending you like um a comparison clip from the original anime and and to this one, um yes, how detailed and how like more expressive holo is with just her ears and her tail yes that was always something they had to nail and they did well in the original but it is so much more emphasized 
in the reboot that it, it's just it, it's like there's a, it feels like there's a lot of like holo fans from like the original who were on staff for the reboot and who who were like i could do this better and so they <laughs> were like <laughs> you know they were they they took holo and they really made her like all the more expressive like in all possible ways right like not just her yeah. her mannerisms and stuff but also like with her tail and ears um which i think is like those like those two those like animal features are like easily like they they set her apart from like a lot of other anime characters so that's part of her part of her charm if you will it, it's such an like that's the <clears throat> one thing uh, i'm not a furry are... though <laughs> no not a definitely not a furry right <laughs> <laughs> um, like, uh, for something like so biggest lie I've ever told biggest lie <laughs> me, me uh, looking at my bookmarks oh no I'm <laughs> oh no <laughs> oh no <laughs> um, yeah it, 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 you'd be surprised because it's actually a fairly simple color palette for Holo it's like brown and red and it's like very iconic I want to say uh look that she has like it, it's one of those things because mm. of the massive tail and the ears you can like you see a silhouette and you can almost always identify that as holo and i know that they've literally right. made merch out of that um so yeah it phenomenal looking and i love the way the the, the adaptation this time around uh did a lot for both lawrence and holo um, I'm a sh I can only assume, but I can, I'm 99.9% sure you haven't seen the original. I have not. No. Okay. Ever since I knew this was happening, I was just like, eh, I'll just watch this. The both, both the original anime and this one have their own benefits to them. And I, I think it's a testament to, um, that's the director, the, direct, the directorial staff, whoever was in charge of getting the voice actors together for both the Japanese and English, that they retained the original cast for Lawrence and Holo in both Japanese and English, I believe. And because yes. I, know, I know the Japanese are always very good at bringing back names and reusing people like if you're a voice actor you're a voice actor for like 30 years <laughs> like you're you're, yeah. you're 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 sticking to it um yeah but yeah well it was the same for english because uh i believe it's j michael tatum and Br brina palencia if i'm not mistaken yes uh who are the english voice actors and they're both yeah they're both still very active um in in lots of anime so yes that that helps as well definitely it's it's really funny like going back and listening to them in 2008 and then hearing them try to embody the same characters now because they it, it, it's it's almost like that you you can tell not only from experience but i noticed one thing specifically that caught my attention when it came to holo especially um She's been adapted a few different ways, and, like, I, I've read a few volumes of the original light novel, and she is fairly consistent apart from the reboot this time really emphasized her more, like, childish antics. Like, they really ramped up the, like, look how cute I am factor, like, it, and... A lot like it, that was hand in hand with how much more expressive she has been that she was this time around. Mm. Whereas in the original anime, it was almost like she was kind of like a teenager, like she acted like a teenager when it came to teasing like Lawrence. And this time around, she was a little bit more childish, but it was more expansive. Like, that's one thing I noticed as well with serious moments. She sounded more serious in the original, I think, because of the not, not having as much experience. So she couldn't really be as expressive in a serious situation. And that mm. made that, that was good at the time. 
But it's also very good how much more expressive Brianna can be now in the reboot. Like I enjoy both tremendously. I, I do like the the less the, the bit more toned down teasing of the original, but I, I can't fault either for that. Um it, it, it both characterizations were very, very on point and very iconic. Um and just away from the single holo talk, um, what did you think of the anime coming into this? Because I don't know how many show. I know you watch a lot of anime, um, but at least from what I'm familiar with, there aren't many shows that are f fairly like. I, I want to say Spice and Wolf for its time in t 2008, and I imagine nowadays is still fairly unique. Yes, I 100% agree. There's just not anything quite like it, I don't think, at least that I've seen. Granted, like, most of, like, 90% of what I see is, like, isekai shown in garbage. But point yeah. is, like, um, the, yeah, going in, I remember being, like, uh, you know, at, at this point, like, since I'm watching a lot of the major, pretty much all the major anime that come out every season, I probably would have watched this one regardless, but I also knew that this was one of them that you really liked. So I went in with that as well. Um, not that that really affected my expectations, because like, you do like a, a lot of stuff across the board, so I didn't really know what to expect. Like I didn't have any given expectations, just knowing that it was one of your favorites, but it was just like... It was one that I kept my eye on because I knew, I think you'd explained to me that like it was intentionally kind of slow paced um, and and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So I didn't want to like, I didn't want to, I wanted to give it, uh, give it a proper chance. So I did like a lot of anime I watch on like two times speed just to like hurry it up and be done with it um because a, a lot of times i feel like i know what's going to happen or i'm just not all that interested just curious where it's going to go um how they tell their story stuff like that um just so i can get it out of the way or i just don't have the subscription it's on <laughs> netflix um <laughs> yeah. anyway yeah um but stuff like that um but this one I watched all the way through on Crunchyroll, and I actually really... I didn't watch in English. I watched it in Japanese, of course, so I could watch uh, as soon as it came out from every week. Uh, but yeah, like, I liked the uh, the characterizations and stuff of the characters. Like, Holo's very unique way of speaking in Japanese. I don't really think I've heard anyone talk quite like her, and it, it comes off as, like... Uh, I don't want to... <laughs> it's not, like... Uh, I'm trying to think of the word. I'm. A, I, this always happens to me. Um, I have. There's. There's like a precise word I'm looking for, and I just can't. I just can't reach into my arsenal to find it. Um, but uh, it's just. It's just very. Like you said, there's like. There's nothing like it. I don't that I've seen. I'm sure there's stuff similar, but I haven't really gone out of my way to see anything. Uh, quite like this, and I was surprised actually. Fuck. Um by just just like how mellow it was you know because like the the like the most dramatic it ever gets is like there's some kid who's gonna steal holo away or the village is about to be threatened out of uh, a ton of their money by the church like that's as dramatic as it ever gets like those like super dramatic climaxes of arcs um yeah whereas like what i'm used to is like everyone's about to die um so it's it's almost refreshing uh in that way but it is like one of those things like you can tell immediately it's like very heavily uh like not even just very heavily, but almost entirely like carried by the main two characters. Like that's like that's it. Like that's the show. Like regardless of what they do going forward, it's like all about the developing relationship between the main two characters. It's it's so obvious almost immediately. And I it has been a while, so I'm not the uh the earlier episodes are far back in my memory at this point. Uh so mm -hmm. I'm struggling to remember what actually happened there um but yeah like i i just uh it, it was a nice change of pace for me but uh 
And I did think like, you know, there were times I'm I'm just die, spiraling into my all my thoughts now. But um, there were times like uh, there were times throughout where I was like, uh, you know, I th- these two are being. <laughs> are being a little childish for no reason like they're having spats for for no reason but it's you come to see by the end that like especially holo i think there are times when she and it's i think it's part of her character as well like obviously it's intentional i don't think it's an accident but uh you know like there are times when she comes off as really like selfish and needy and it's not really like a great look for her but you can tell like after Lawrence and Holo resolve everything like they've their relationship has come out of that stronger so it does work like and to some extent you know you do understand Holo's feelings like why she feel well you understand what she's feeling maybe not why at least on my end but I think you could understand why she's feeling that way if you uh if if you were so inclined but for the most part it's just a lot of like a lot of the draw um like a lot of the the moments that i think i'm going to remember from this show are the ones where they're just like talking like the main like holo and lawrence are just like talking to each other um like some of the like i remember that moment from a few episodes ago maybe it was 24 actually um see it's all blending together but um <laughs> it, i think it might have been 24 when uh I think she had just transformed or no, she was about to transform into her wolf form. And, uh, like she, Lawrence was reassuring, uh, reassuring her and they were having this cute little spat, um, you know, teasing each other and whatnot. Uh, it's stuff like that. I think that I like, is this show's like real strong point? Cause you know, there's a lot of, as someone who's watched a lot of anime, there are for a lot of shows, there are very specific things, right. About, the shows that you really almost always like to see like if it's a um like for example let's say it's like a high school dxd-esque harem show you know there's plenty of action and stuff and like all these fantasy garbage shit happening all the time but really the moments that you come out and remembering are the ones that were probably well i'm assuming for most of its audience i haven't seen it but like something along those lines are the ones that are like where super fan servicey, right? Like those are the moments like a lot of people I think watch that kind of show for. Um <laughs> and this is a weird comparison to make, but it is like for this show, those moments that you watch this show for that you really always like to see are the ones where they're like Holo and Lawrence are like you know, teasing each other, having fun talking to each other, just their relationship is is nice. There's no tension. Um it's a uh, but when there is tension it's always to develop their relationship further and uh you know seeing all the stuff that they go through uh is it is like i almost want to it's not like it's compelling in a very in a sense that i'm not used to um because i'm always used to being used to be uh drawn into stories by a lot like heavier stakes um but in this case, a lot of like, uh, you know, the equivalent, <laughs> the equivalent of like action and, and fighting in Spice and Wolf is economics, like raising yeah, the price. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How, um, how much can we sell this cube for, my guy? Exactly. It's, how can I, yeah. yeah, how can I raise supply and demand for, uh, you know, the elasticity of demand for this fucking uh, rock? <laughs> I, I think you're right. The comparison of like, Whereas every other show has end of the world or end of civilization esque stakes, the stakes for Spice and Wolf is how much longer can Holo and Lawrence just hang out? Like yeah. it's it, it. honestly because you're, mm-hmm. you're right. It's but whereas I don't entirely agree with the comparison of High School DxD, you come out only remembering the fan service because that's funnily enough one of those shows where 
the fan service just enhances an already good story, but I'm not going to be one of those gooners that's just like... Well, I I had never seen High School DxD, so I don't even know. I know know the comparison you're trying to make, though. There's a lot of shows that are... like uh, Trinity 7, I'd say, is a fairer comparison, (laughs) where it's just like, you're you're there for for the sexiness, for the hot times. Um... Yeah, I I, just, I completely understand the comparison you're trying to make. Yeah, Spice and Wolf is just it it is literally in the name. It it is Hollow and Lawrence. It is all about them. And I I know what you mean by I'm not understanding a lot of the, some of the reasons why Hollow acts the way she does. And I think that's that is indeed like even Lawrence acts the same way. And I think that is definitely on purpose. Because it's one of those things that we discover later on. And I think that's almost one way, like, funnily enough, because I, I played um, My Year with Holo, the, an English, an unofficial English translation on my channel. That's one thing a part of that, and I think a part of the original anime touched on. It's because, like, I uh, don't... I, I'm not really in the place to delve into that because I haven't thought a lot about that. But it, it that is one of those traits of Holo that you in time will come to understand. And it right. makes a lot of sense why people are like, why does she do this? But it's also one of the charms that people see in her. Um, yeah, it... The... the Whoops. The relationship, without a doubt, is... Now the draw because like where when i was younger literally i I was in a i was in a good i was in a rare opportunity where me and a bunch of my mates actually all watched anime together even the cringy ones so unlike a lot of anime fans who didn't have a lot of mates watching anime growing up i actually had a few like we watched even the cringy harem ones like rosaria vampire and dxd like we Let's go. And we watched some other shit like Codebreaker and fucking High School of the Dead and like all this other fucking shit I remember. And I remember uh, seeing Spice and Wolf and it was like fresh off season two or like a few years after the fact. And then I was like, hey guys, this one looks really cool. And I remember like two of my mates going like, this is fucking boring. And they didn't want to watch it. And I'm like, okay, fair enough. I'll watch it myself. <laughs> And, like, while I'll admit, yeah, probably the draw was, like, ooh, cute naked girl, (laughs) woohoo, at the very start. I, like, growing up, I always just liked different shit. Like, I liked learning about economics and currency. Like, I I love just very simple, different shit. Like, when I travel, I like to see how daily life works for other people, and I, I, like, I, I love just le- like, different shit like that fascinates me so when this when, when the original spice and wolf anime delved into mostly being about economics and currency at the start i was actually like all right i'm i'm in fuck it this is actually really interesting but because it was one of those first shows that only i wanted to watch i think that's where like that connection for me started to happen because i was like this is one of those few times where only i want to watch this and because i didn't even though i knew how to download uh, a, a pirate anime on my ipad like a fucking king i didn't ha- i didn't use any social service i didn't use twitter reddit or i don't know how I, like or anything else i didn't go to any forums so i didn't know how big spice and wolf was so I think uh, it's oh. it's easy to understand. Like that, that, that's why, like for me, it felt like personal. I was like, only I mm. know about this, <laughs> even though I didn't know the fucking internet existed and the rest of the world knew about it. So yeah, that's that's another way it was just kind of personal. And like, whereas mm. a lot of other shows had uh, like the over the top anime reactions to things, Hollow and Lawrence. Were, were like a mature relationship and they like yeah they teased each other but they they didn't overreact like the first time lawrence sees hollow naked he's just he turns his head and it's just like he's not overreacting and i'm like oh he's being a regular guy <laughs> like how what he's so rare in an anime to have just a regular dude <laughs> funnily enough 
So, yeah. And, and I God think, forbid they see a naked uh, woman. Oh, God. Dude, that, that, that's why, like, <laughs> so many of the fucking transporter isekai guy into a new world, like, over top over the top reaction is very uh truth to power of <laughs> the typical anime fan <gasps> naked woman uh, dies nose. um but i, I imagine like cause the yeah. the original light novels the original 17 light novels came out between like 2006 and 11 and 2011 and the original anime ended in 2009 Imagine being a fan, and then, like, there's no news about season three. I remember when I first started watching Giguk, and he his two most biggest anime demands were No Game No Life season two and Spice and Wolf season three. Like, that, at that time period, would have fucking sucked for fans of this. Because mm. I actually looked it up. The author didn't confirm until like 2015 that there wasn't going to be a season three Dang. so that like that that's that's f like <laughs> six years of like dude the fuck's going on so big l for them but um now we have this and i'm so happy you woke me up with the best news that I did. merchant meets I a saw wise wolf happen. I saw it happen. I was sitting at my desk at work, and my anime list sends me a notification. I'm like, "Oh, oh. my god!" Um, I didn't. So, I didn't think they were gonna do it. Like that genuinely. I had a feeling. I had a feeling they would, because I think they put too much. Like, because it has been a trend recently. I don't, can't remember who also followed this trend. But it has happened, well, I swear. Um, well, but Rosh like, Rosh Derry. It what happened with Rosh Derry. No, like, I'm. Uh, this is different. I'm talking about. Oh. Um, I'm talking about like uh, shows doing like two sets of like two C, uh, sets of two core shows. I think it's going to be another twenty five episodes. I think it will. Um, One. Uh, I. That's just my guess. I'm not sure about that, but I have a feeling. Uh, I can't remember what, other, but I've, it's been a trend that like some anime have done like two sets of two core uh, shows, um, like two seasons of two core shows. Um, shows doing two. Fuck, you get it. Um, like yeah, it's it's happened before, and it's, I think it's gonna happen again. Uh, I think. Oh God, I'm trying to come up with an example. I think Shangri La Frontier is gonna do. It hasn't happened yet, but it, it will happen. God damn it. I'm trying to whatever. It's happened, I swear. But like um so I think there will be another 25 episodes. Uh but we'll see. Um but yeah, I I had a feeling just because like they put it feels like they put so much love and and care into the reboot. So I had a feeling that they wouldn't just leave it. Uh I had a feeling they had plans for more cuz like you know, like they well, I mean that like that's exactly it. Like they just put so much love into this. Like that's I feel like that's mm -hmm. got to like they were they came in expecting like this to be a reasonable success and that they were going to want to do more. So they've probably they probably had planned, you know. You can imagine part of the reason for this reboot was so that they could get into territory that hadn't been already covered by the light novels or, or that hadn't been covered in the previous anime in the light novels. So like, uh, even them just covering this previously skipped over volume four, I think is enough evidence for that. Um, and regardless, yeah. even if you consider like this pace they're on, right. Um, even if they don't have another 25 episodes, it's still going to probably get into volume six, which hasn't been covered before. So, you have to imagine that they're probably going to want to do more as well. Mm hmm Yeah. No, I, I see that. It, I think it was just the case for a lot of fans, like, how they've been burned before. And they're yes. just like, we, we, we don't well, know. You don't, when you see it, when you've seen as many anime as me, you get a sense for these things. You get a sixth yeah. sense. We, we don't, we don't have Not the Not that that's something to brag about, <laughs> but it has happened to me. 
We don't have the anime <laughs> third eye like you, my guy. Yeah, you, 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 it's you, true. You, you are one of, one of a few, a few <laughs> breed that has that. I, yes. Uh, <laughs> Not that that's something what to I... brag about, but it, it has happened to me. Yeah. <laughs> nah, I don't, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm happy about that. Uh, yep. It's good to I know things ahead eye. of time, thanks to you. Yes. Um, thanks to my predictions, from... which are sometimes wrong. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so... <laughs> yeah, well, that, that's definitely true. Um, so, because the the way the light novels were made, how like the the light novels, the author I, I should have learned how to pronounce his name As Asuna Haskura or something like that. Oh God, here we go. Let me let me find it. <laughs> Asu Asuna Hasekura, I think. That's Wait, I'm gonna how find it. it. Holy shit! All right, let, me, got pull, this. let me pull him up. Come on, Mr. Japanese man. Uh, holy shit. I, I believe in uh, you. Yeah, yeah, he's uh, Isuna Hasakura. Yeah, that's right. I Isuna Hasakura. Okay. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, the original 17 uh, volumes that the anniversary. Damn, 8.82 average score on Mal for the light novel. That's crazy. Bruh. That's really that? good. Um, yeah, the original 17, like, concluded in 2011. And then. For whatever fucking reason, like he, like five years later, he was like, you know what, I'm gonna keep going, and he um started releasing lad. volumes eighteen to twenty four. But apparently, I didn't actually realize this. They were in conjunction with the spin off Wolf and Parchment. Apparently, they're mm -hmm. actually somewhat aligned and tell a similar story, just from a different POV up until volume 24 as far as i'm aware but um so taking away the side stories the the few volumes that cover side stories in the original 17 mm. there's actually like enough material if they do 25 26 episode series uh for about two more seasons at this rate so i could easily see like season two taken up four more volumes they take away some of the side story stuff and they could easily they could fit in more because they, i believe like three or four of the volumes in the original 17 were called side colors and that that was shit like covering up like th there's an extra chapter about nora and the, some of the older characters mm. that were involved so taking those oh my out, god i forgot about her she was yeah there too. i know <sighs> the cute blonde girl oh, don't forget about her um i just remember she's a shepherd <laughs> Yes, correct. Um, oh, so yeah, the two more seasons is, I think that's viable, considering the popularity. Yeah. I yeah, could, it, it's could, definitely could because be of the things I've been liking on Twitter. But like, I see shit about different spice and wolf pop ups all the time, and I know that's just a thing about <laughs> what Japan do for a currently airing anime. <laughs> I Here don't we go. Know. Trent's angry. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not angry at all. I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to ask for your opinion on. I, I actually, I'm not angry at all. Is it common for currently airing anime to get so much stuff? Like, because oh yeah. I've seen a lot oh God. of stuff oh like God, this. Oh God, yeah. Yeah. Um, like, yeah. It depends on what it is. Like, you mm -hmm. have to. There's a lot of things to consider when it comes to like what. Uh, anime collabs and stuff because you have to consider like how marketable is the anime how well can the anime translate to whatever collab it is like it totally depends so you like one of the you, this probably isn't very hard to imagine one of the shows that I saw get like even way before I was really in you know neck deep with the anime stuff as I am now even before all that, I was seeing the show get a bunch of collabs. And even now, like, I mean, it's about to start something new. But even now, like three years after it's ended or whatever, two years after the, the, and the movie, two, and two years after the movie, quintessential quintuplets, they still get a ton of collabs everywhere, right? That's mm -hmm. not hard to imagine, right? Because it's, I think it's one of the most marketable romance anime out there because you've got these like five girls each with their own distinct colors uh that they can like work off of so like if you're maybe you're a cafe or something you can make five different drinks 
to go with each one of the girls. Yeah. And all of a sudden, people have five reasons to come into this cafe. So, and it could be anything, right? Like, you could you could do that if you were fucking, a, I don't know, like an axe throwing business. Like, who fucking knows, right? <laughs> like you could do anything. Yeah. Um, you, so, you still see new figures of, like, Rem from ReZero around yes. pop up sometimes. Like, yes. Like, Chris, I, I, I just... I could. I didn't have anything to compare it to. Seeing all this shit, like not shit, like all this merch, just like appear, and it's always new merch. And I, I, I don't know if this one Twitter account that always promotes, uh, new release on this website. Um, and then I click on the link, and it's all Japanese, obviously. But then there's just like a bunch of new keychains and prints uh, and mm -hmm. scrolls, and I'm like, they've been releasing this fairly consistency consistent for like spice and wolf and i'm just trying to i think well Is and that definitely the shows deal? their investment yeah i i think that okay. definitely shows their like not just right not just the the uh the company who made it or like you know the because it's not we're not talking about the studio right? we're talking about like the publisher it's not just the publisher who's invested in it clearly it's also these other companies they're collabing with who think that the show is has enough popularity and and behind it to want to make these collab products so i i do think that shows to that speaks to their overall investment in the in the reboot so i do think that's a very good sign for sure yes cool because yeah like wasn't getting angry but yes i am like damn it that shit there's so much of it i do want some of it I am getting so I, I've gotten two things, um, and they're still on the way. A figure that's meant to get here by like November, and then like an A five print of Holo, and mm -hmm. your then the book, obviously. So yes. those are the three things I've bought, Spies and Wolf related. Um, apart from some of the other light novels and audio books, um, yeah. Don't also, worry. I may, I might, I might have joked and said you were angry, but I'm the one who's angry when I see collabs and stuff for things I like in Japan that bro, I can't get. Literally, that I, I was almost kind of like, damn. I wish I was like in Japan now, <laughs> like the yeah. time Spice the Wolves airing, so I can yeah. pick up some of this shit. Like, like, I'm almost like desperate of like, okay, because we're trying to plan to go to Japan in July 2026, and I'm kind of like, hey, look, a season two can come out around then. Oh, so I can get yeah, some real. That'll be fucking. That'll be sweet. Um, Bro, I just hope Persona Six time. is out by that time. <laughs> oh, gotta go. Imagine. all over. Gotta go nuts Bro, if if there's shit. if there's Persona Six stuff out in Japan when we're there, God, it's over for me. My Woo! wallet is gonna be done. Dunzo. Wallet. Wallet is over. This wallet is over. <laughs> My wallet's wallet gonna be done. So I'm gonna buy all of the things. Yes, can't wait. Um. Sorry to, to, sorry to keep comparing the reboot to the original anime. It's kind of hard not to when well, yeah. the original was all we had for so long. Um, the characterization <laughs> of Lawrence this time around is far more interesting. And that I can probably does that. have to do with the the voice acting as well. But like, I, like in the original, he was rather dull. And... Even in the first few volumes of the light novel, he's kind of a dick because he like you, you can you can tell he is purely money driven, and that is a thing for merchants. That's one thing that's depicted well. A lot a lot of depictions of these character archetypes that aren't hollow because she's a fucking different thing. Like the like the church, the merchants, like stalls and people in the cities and in smaller towns for the time era it's placed in i believe it's very like v very interesting and very true to power and mm. lawrence just so happening to be the the somewhat nicer merchant still a bit of a dick but the 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 traveling merchant that holo came across is like th their dynamic is fucking wonderful, even from the start. Mm. And I liked Lawrence so much more this time around, even though a lot of the problems they get into that this is to do with the story as a whole and not just the anime. A lot of the problems that these two get into 
which then lead to serious climactic moments are always things that they like 80 percent of the time it's things that they bring upon themselves by making yeah, like hard argue dodgy that. deal dodgy deals with armor or coming in like with the fucked wheat or something like that and like the, the whole th- all like lawrence being oh, like i this- could sell this wheat don't worry i'm a merchant yeah. that's what i do don't or like a marty a marty being like hey i want to marry your girl and he's just like i can make money from this and then like pranks <laughs> the kid and then and then and then hollow what if i accident- scam the kid and keep my girl i know <laughs> what money and women <laughs> let's go oh my god see like a lot of it is issues they like things they bring bring upon themselves and that i remember literally in the original anime like being like what the fuck are you doing <laughs> like my dumbass 12 year old brain like lawrence what the fuck are you doing and <laughs> it's so stupid but it's it also plays up later i i would like to think later on it makes both of them realize how much they value each other and you can see that by the end of yeah that's a big thing for the, sure. at the the end of the show like they are both being somewhat selfish in their own ways and then through incidents that happen they realize how much they actually care about each other and yes. i i think they only touched upon it briefly in the reboot but in the original they really played upon holo's fear of outliving lawrence and like because mm. she's in it like thousands of years old i I remember season two this was one thing i watched a bit of season one and season two leading up for this and season two literally opens with like holo having a dream of her running around in like a snowy wilderness seeing lawrence in the like seeing her family of wolves and then seeing lawrence she runs for lawrence and when she gets to him, he turns into a bunch of skull and bones. Because Damn. she's just imagining herself, like, th- the passage of time is going to fucking kill him. And he, she can't do anything about that. Which, I think the only way they've really touched upon that in the remake is the whole part when she was, like, freaked out about her f- home being gone. Mm. And she was like, if you give me a child, I will have something to remember you by, or something like that. Like, that whole scene, one of the few times where they're like, hey, she's hot, remember? Like, (laughs) she's naked. Oh my god! No, (laughs) yeah, like, one of the few scenes where she actually tries to play into that. Because, like, I I remember they, there was like a paragraph in the light novel where she mentioned that. And then he kind of brushed it aside, but they really emphasize it in the anime. And I mean, fair enough. Um, get the clicks. So yeah, it, get get the clicks, bro. Get the clicks. Um, yeah, it, it's uh, it's one reason like I love the story. I, I think I remember you. You said in your uh, <laughs> comparison to my book that. Oh, I, I I forgot the end note exactly. You left me, but you said, "Oh, the relationship of my duo, you don't understand parts of it." But then you also mm. wrote, "But then again, I also don't understand entirely the relationship of Lawrence and Holo." Yeah, I remember you made well, that you is made one, that so that's, comparison. Yeah, that is one thing for me. Like I, I like like I sort of. I sort of get it, right? And I really agree with the uh, whole, the idea of, like, all these things they go through make them realize how much they actually care about each other, even if it's not, like, something they realize on the surface. Like, deep down, they they really do care for each other a, a lot, and the things they go through help them realize that. I totally agree that that's part of it. But, like, it feels like, for me, they, their relationship kind of feels like it's it goes in a lot of it hits a lot of different points really quickly. Like they, they kind of feel like they're already, you know, in a relationship by like episode three. And I'm like, you guys have known each other for like 20 minutes. (laughs) Like, come on now. And, um, and so that's, that's part of it. And it's kind of (laughs) like, 
I don't want to spoil anything about your book, really, but it's there's something. Um, there are moments between your two main characters where it's like, um, they they kind of seem like one moment they kind of seem like they're genuinely like at each other's throats, like they're really just disagreeing fundamentally on a like a on a certain thing or whatever. Um, and then almost immediately, like the the girl is like, "Come here." boy let me hug you we're we're best friends now <laughs> and i'm like all right whoa okay Ooh, holy shit come here boy <laughs> come here boy um so and i'm just like uh, whoa like how did i get here they were just arguing two seconds ago um so and to a certain extent i get it uh because you know a lot of times well especially in that moment in your in your, in your book there's is a moment of weakness but um it was, uh, so, and I get it, but like, you know, it was one of those things like, because I hadn't seen a lot of those two specifically, like a lot of how their relationship in the past, I didn't really fully understand the extent of their relationship. Like, uh, so like when I didn't really think like, oh, could they go from sh- straight from like this heated argument into like a, a, a caring, a sort of touching scene, um, a sort of touching moment. So that's kind of how the same way, like that, like quick transition between weird things, uh, and not, and spice and wolf has a lot of subtlety to it too. in in the, the way the relationship is portrayed, uh, you know, they don't always like, it's, it's something anime does all the time where like they say things they don't really mean, but they, it's like, if you look at their faces or their expressions and stuff, you can see that they like mean something else. Like they're saying this out of like a, you know, out of principle or what, like, you know, they're saying something that, but they mean something else. And my monkey brain is like, what? I, sorry, I don't get it. I'm lost. Um, and I've gotten better picking up on that over time, but like, especially when I was a kid, it was bad, but you know, uh, it's it's one of those things where like going quickly in between stuff like that kind of leaves me in the dust and I'm like, "Oh, what I don't really get it." But uh I do think like general I think the one thing I would say is like you guys got way too comfortable way too fast. What the hell? Um but again, I do think that's part of the uh those those kinds of thing. Like that relationship is a big draw of this show. Um yeah. so I get it from like a um that, a story that might have been something that they paced better in the original actually and that's what mm. i think about it because you're right they were kind of like acting the same from episode three to as episode they were in like 25. episode 25 yes exactly no, so th- that's it like they were caring and like like handhold like handholding almost and like the the ending scene where like Holo leans against Lawrence, like uh, the only different thing is that she just had a bigger smile and Lawrence was smiling back. Like that was the few thing. Like she, uh, yeah, I I too I do kind of get what you mean. Yeah, I think they they pace the relationship bit a little bit better in the original yeah. because I think as well in the original there was that slight build up to a scene where. Lawrence said something like, if only uh, I didn't let you, like, if only you didn't do this to, to Hollow, and she got really offended, and then they came back from it later. They didn't actually build up how close they were until a bit after that, mm. but they didn't let that happen in the remake. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, I, maybe I'm misremembering, but that does, I feel like that's correct. Um... Yeah, no, I I get what you're saying. The yeah. I just wanted to see it, like because there's one thing like for like not to go back to the book your book comparison, but like the, the your main two characters we hadn't seen that relationship from the very start, but with Holo, so like I kind of get not understanding that completely, but with these two we see the exact moment that they meet and we see their relationship build from the ground up, and I'm like, and you know, episode three they're all cuddly, and I'm like, what? what yeah <laughs> what yeah yeah Where, whereas there's time for me to talk about the, their backstory and exactly. establish that yeah exactly. where these two don't man i am trying i'm comparing myself to asuna <laughs> and i am i'm not deserving of that um <laughs> yeah well, i'm I just saying that either where yeah where you take you take inspiration from spice and wolf a lot 
yeah but when it comes to the main duo i had like i had my own plans for them and then later on when i was part way through writing it i'm like oh i kind of see it i kind of understand like i i drew a bit of inspiration from them yeah um most definitely um one thing about the anime is uh, another thing about uh, comparison. I mentioned this to you previously. The OST. Um, from uh, now, I know usually when it comes to soundtracks and stuff like that, you like to refer to Mecha because he does more stuff like that. Yeah. But was there anything about the soundtracks that stood out to you this time? Honestly, this I gotta be perfectly honest with you, and I th- I mean this in the best way possible. I did not ever notice it. And I think yeah. like the actual OST and I think that is a good thing because what I what I think it, an OST needs to do fundamentally is enhance the scenes that it's behind, right? It's it's supposed to just create the mood, it's supposed to, you know, en- enhance add some drama to a scene whatever. So with with me not being like I never disengaged with the show to be like, wow, this song's really good. It it just, I kept engaging with the actual show with the soundtrack behind it. So I think that's the best, co- like one of the best co- compliments I can give to an OST, right? Because it's not like fucking sonic right where you're like playing some shitty fucking <laughs> and you, this song's really fucking good right it's time to face your fears well, i was gonna say city escape but yeah, yeah you're not as you're not yeah, as yeah, long time a fan as sonic as me but um no. yeah the uh yeah it's it's exactly it's exactly that like you have to like like the those the goal of an OST is should be to enhance the the visuals and stuff what's actually happening. So mm-hmm. with me not noticing it I think that's a good thing. Yeah. No, I completely mm-hmm. agree. It's like the, the, there's one part which I thought was better than the original but I also entirely agree. I like I can listen to I I played a few of the tracks when they were released on Spotify. And I literally, in my head, was like, I don't know what episode this is from. And I think that's actually, that you're right, that's a testament, because it just enhanced the scenes it was in, whether I noticed it or not. It set the vibe very well. Um, now, in comparison to the original, the original had similar elements, but they played up flutes a lot more heavily, which also gave it a unique style for an anime. Like, I, I still remember, like, it would just be a casual scene and it would be very simple instruments, like, very quiet. It might be one or two strings going. And then when they start teasing each other or like, giving each other shit, like, this really nice flute track would start playing to emphasize, hey, it's funny time. Like, it's <laughs> it, it, it played up to the moment very well. And, like, same thing with Exploration. Like, it, they had more s- songs that would play just to fit the ch- the moment. Whereas, like, in this one, it fitted the vibe entirely. Right. And I had a lot... I, I feel like the original had a bit more personality, but it was one of those things. You could tell, oh, here's the, all the flutes. So this is a cutesy, nice scene. But you don't always want that. It does kind of distract. I I, I was going to... I was going to say otherwise, but I think you're right. You want an OST that actually just enhances it without standing out too much. Yeah. So, I agree. Um, I... I like the openings and endings, though. Well, I really like the second opening and ending. Yeah. I'm a little biased, but whatever. I... Yeah, no, I... (laughs) Why? Why? Why are you biased? Because <laughs> they're tell, artists tell I really like. Ooh, that's why. Yeah. I, I need. I do need to talk about them as well. Because um, I actually like. Th- th- this is almost gonna sound a little bit like pathetic. Almost the. <laughs> it, do you ever have? I'm sure you do. Being a musician, have like just. An old song or whatever, or something 
uh, just a piece of music that immediately reminds you of a certain moment and you kind of get like teary or like damn just sitting there like fuck that's I definitely what, uh, I definitely know what you mean. I don't know if I can think yeah. of any exact uh songs that do that. But it, there are definitely yeah, like just, older just, like older songs that remind me of stuff I listened to when I was a little kid. Um yeah. Yeah. See so, um the original anime opening uh Tabi no Tochu by Kira Natsumi um I believe Tabi no Tochu translates to like in the middle of a journey. The TV mm. size version of it, like how they used it, it opens up with like Natsumi's voice and like a really beautiful composition, in my opinion. And every time I offhandedly hear it, like very rarely do I hear it nowadays. But when I was looking at the soundtrack on Spotify, I was like, I'm going to listen to it again. And in the first 10 seconds, I was like, oh, fuck. Here's my childhood. Here's me, like, sitting on my bed on my iPad watching Spice and Wolf. Here's me, like, just... I wasn't an adult. I didn't have all this fucking shit going on in my life. I was just a kid. And I'm just there. And I, like, it's a beautiful fucking piece of music. It is so good. Like, I, like... I, if anything, I would just encourage you to go listen to that. I think mm. Amelie did an English cover of it at one point. I will um, listen to that. No, but it's good. But yeah, listen to Tabi no Tochu. It's very good. And um, so I was very, very uh, happy when I found out that the first OP for Merchant Meets the Wise Wolf was called Tabi no Yusuke. UK, sorry, UK. Uh, but it had the Tabi no in it. And I was like, ha! So what you've done there, and um, it does actually have similar vibes. Uh, mm. I, I think, it, yeah, uh, Journey's Destination or Whereabouts of a Journey is what this one was called. Hana Hope, she did a phenomenal job. She did it in English and Japanese. There, there are more artists nowadays doing it in both, or at least that I've noticed, the shows yes, I've watched. And you're heard. you were correct. Yeah, and... Bloody hell, she nailed it in both English and Japanese. Like, that it is wonderful. Such a good song. Um, so, yeah. That's good. I, I don't they know. don't all but, nail it, so. Yeah. The English the, version, at least. Oh, yeah. I yeah, have nah, thoughts. I, <laughs> is, but is that is surprising? Is this the right time to... <laughs> no, 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 no. It's, it does not surprise me at all, but is this... <laughs> Do you no, want to express I, I even have thoughts about I yeah I even have thoughts about the Yoasobi English English versions. I have thoughts about those too, but that's needs probably not the right time. Um, okay, yeah, no, that, that's fair. spoiler. I don't think they're good. Um, <laughs> damn, no, nope. that's a that's an opinion. Uh, yeah, I, I just I straight up that. don't think they're good. Just keep like you don't they, you didn't need to do that anyway. Whatever. <laughs> like no, yeah. <laughs> if you're going out of the way, you're wa listen to anime music. No one's gonna fucking care if it's a chap whatever stupid ass fucking. And the lyrics aren't good. I well, okay, I, I can agree on the lyrics not being good, but some people do care. Like I noticed with this one, for example, and it means I, I give a shit. Like no. some people do actually. Like some people care about the like I, I watched it in English and Japanese, so I heard both, uh, and I think both are really good and i that's the thing unlike th there are some anime songs i'll chuck in a playlist i'm not gonna I put any can, of the i think they songs can be good the only the, the thing is about the like i haven't heard this english version of the spice and wolf opening so i don't know if it's good or not but i think for the most part a lot of when japanese artists do english they're having their english lyrics done by someone who doesn't speak english or someone who whose second language is English, so I think right. it just I told I think the lyrics aren't good, and I think a lot of times the Japanese people's English pronunciations are bad, which is why I don't like them. Because I I already couldn't tell what they were saying in Japanese, and when they go to English, I still can't tell what they're saying. <laughs> Right. So that's yeah, that's the I reason that. I don't like them. Because I think why go out of your way. When it's just gonna be worse, you know. Okay, no, mm. I, I, I get what you mean. I, I get that. I'm, 
also now just discovering Hana Hope is 18 years old. What the fuck? She's talented. Um, how dare she be talented? Uh, but either way, I, uh, I recommend listening to the OG opening and to the English version of Merchant Reads the Wise Wolves opening. It, I would like to hear what you think later on. Um, mm. but I just, I just recommend them in general. Um, God, I'm just going through my notes and I'm like, what, what have I, I've covered a lot and what have I yet to cover? Ah, uh, um, I was, um, I, I watched the last half, obviously the last five episodes in Japanese to catch up for this review. Um, but like going back briefly to J. Michael Tatum and, uh, Brina Palancina, um, they also did the, uh, audio books. Funnily enough, they did the English audio. Yeah, is very good about that. Yeah, so they have had so much time to work on perfecting these characters, even though it has been like 10 years. I, I don't know when they did all the audiobooks, but it has been years. Um, so fucking props to them. They did a wonderful job. I hope they come back for season two. Um, and also I couldn't really make the comparison of the Japanese voice actress for Holo, but I actually remembered like, oh, wait a minute. I played the game, even though it's not the same, mm. like the same experience you're getting from watching the anime, I can actually still hear the quality of her voice acting. And she, I reckon the Japanese voice actress for Holo is also wildly improved over the years mm. um both sound very very good and she like you're right they i didn't actually notice until you pointed it out earlier she has a very unique way of but like, she's very unique way of speaking yes like in japanese we can't describe it, it because actually... we don't speak japanese but she does i swear yeah no i I also entirely agree. Like, there is something very unique about her dialect. Just the way she talks. Yes. Um, uh, it's just plot-wise. Um, I saw a few people talking about how this... The, the introduction... Like, the introduction, you're right. Like, there, was, there was almost a hint at more to come. Because, look, spoiler if you're stupid, but obviously the opening scene was... Holo speaking to her daughter and it like in the future obviously and in a way like Holo kind of represents older fans and her daughter represents newer fans because the fact that we're being told the story now if you're a new fan you are kind of like you're you're late to the party but you can still enjoy the story and it, it kind of was very emblematic, and I appreciated that. And even having her daughter there just hints that, like, this story has a happy ending. And that's one thing that a lot of stories don't have. Like, a lot of stories just kind of fucking fall off a cliff and don't get concluded, or they just go for years. And Spice and Wolf, yeah, it's been going for years. But it had a happy ending. And then there's a new story coming out of that from Wolf and Parchment, so... Like, we, we get to see a little glimpse of the happy ending, which is nice. Um, one thing I do really like about this second arc, even, like, even though, like, Nora was a vital part of her story in, in that arc and getting shit done, Elsa and Evan played a far bigger role in, like, helping Terio. as obviously this is where they're from, even though they were originally going to run... I because th this is one of the arcs I had didn't know anything about, so it was a surprise to me coming into it. I seen the opening arc with like Lawrence meeting Holo and the apples and the fuck all that fucking shit. I've seen like five different iterations of that. I don't, I I don't need to see that anymore. Even uh, no matter how wonderful it is, I don't need to see it anymore. But um, I liked the emphasis on more characters and how they actually are a bit more vital to getting the resolution. It's more than just Lawrence and Hollow this time. And I think there's going to be more of that from what I know of the story. There's going to be more occasional characters popping in and 
making the plot like driving the plot forward rather than just Lawrence at Hollow selling bread. Well, there's that. There's and, and characters is one of the strongest suits of this series. Mm. Like you, you do have the generic dickhead that's just like ang- the generic guy who's angry in a village, but then you also have characters like Evan, Elsa, Amari, Nora, and um. That one chick that Holo said was like a bird. I don't remember her name. <laughs> I don't know. Prophecy, prophecy lady that Lawrence asked, oh, do pagan gods and humans ever do it? And she's just like, haha, maybe. And <laughs> that's hard. That, was, uh, that, that Fuck, that's nice. And then Holo's in the background like, god damn, he asked that question. Wow. Incredible. Um, yeah, it, it's... The the characters are one of the strongest suits to this, and the fact that we're getting, like, more of it, and we're going to be able to see beyond, like, this the shit's been going on for 15, like, 15 years since the last anime ended, and we're only now getting new content, that's, like, I, I'm a hungry fan, and we're finally getting everything... People are getting what they want. I'm rambling. Trent Help. is getting what, um, what he wants. I am getting what I want. This is good. I, I, I'm now at the uh, end of like uh, the three shows I was choosing to watch. They've all ended. So now we're going to find some more shows. To well, they're, all, they're about watch. to start another season. Don't get too mm. hungry yet. It'll only be like another week the, until yeah. a bunch, until like. I'm watching a new set of 40 fucking shows. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> that's, that's your whole week taken, or your month taken, um, or season taken. I'm curious. Like, the whole season. Well, we, oh, no, well, we got Blue Lock, we got ReZero. Uh, I think there's some other shit. Bro, but, I'm so hype. I'm, this, this season is crazy. I think I explained this once to you before, but this season is fucking crazy. You, you did. There's like Bleach. There's fucking Shangri-La Frontier, which I'm hype about. Magic Lumiere. Fucking, uh, oh my God, what else? But there's more things. There's other things. Okay. I'm really excited about Bleach, though. Bleach is, Bleach is now, it's getting into like the climax part of its final arc. Fucking hype as shit. There's, uh, yeah, Shangri-La Frontier. Well, sort of. Oh yeah, Blue Box and Don to Don are huge. Yeah. Fucking can't wait for those. Um, Blue Box, I think, is going to be two cores even, which is very nice. Happy about that. I'm sure Don to Don will have a second season. They are probably animating the crap out of it, so they can't uh, do too much at once. But they're pro- they're chainsaw manning it probably. Um, but it not even just chainsaw manning it. They're probably like fucking like mob psycho 100ing it mm. uh they're going absolutely insano mode on that one so really looking forward to that uh but that those are the big ones yeah there's a bunch of other stuff i'm watching too but absolutely those are my favorites nah that'll be good big stuff indeed i think we're we're nearly close to wrapping up i've got i've got two more notes i just want to mention bit a bit out of out of time out of place uh for these notes but I'm going to bring them up anyway because I wrote them down. Um, I, for, for being a longtime fan of Spice and Wolf, who was kind of out of the loop for a few years when, like, I, I just stopped paying attention. And, like, I, I've only really started using other websites like Reddit, like, this year. And, like, I, I, I'm now seeing more shit, like, pop up that... I had no idea about before. So, like, I'm learning more things about shows and whatnot that I like because I've read it. Because, like, Twitter only gives you so much, 140 characters. So I've, I've only started seeing more and learning more about shit this year because I've read it. Um, one thing about fans of the original show compared to now, like, how they would feel getting this adaptation. And I think... The original coming out just in the middle of the original light novel run, it would have been a risk for them at the time. And I can almost tell that it was a risk because of the changes they did make. 
Like I, I mentioned, they mm. skipped volume four and went straight to volume five. But um, there was actually a few changes. You uh, you won't remember him, but you know, at the very start, there was a, a guy called Yare who got the last bit of the wheat, and he later went on to betray Lawrence and that, and in, in the sewers when Holo first turned into a wolf. Yes, yes, I do remember that. So Yare, that happening, he was in the light novel, obviously, but he wasn't in the original anime. They replaced him with just a random girl called Chloe because, uh, I believe the, the, one of the quotes was, Chloe replaced Yare in the anime in order to evoke a greater emotional response from viewers because she almost acted as like a love interest, like a pseudo love interest to Lawrence, and that mm. betrayal had more weight to it because of that. So... I guess... Yeah, that, that, that was kind of one of the ideas they had at the time of, like, let's make this guy a girl so and make her, like, have a crush on Lawrence. So, I'm sold. Exactly. Sold two more seasons, and then it didn't happen. Um, <laughs> and also, be, being, like, long-term fans who they saw the original run of the light novels, and then... Set, uh, volume 17 and 24, as well as Wolf and Parchment. Uh, the author, I believe it's the author, he created an independent uh, game publishing studio called Spicy Tales. Ha ha. Um, and... I the, see what you did there. I oh, oh, see what you did there. And he, because um, he wanted to create a small original... VR game uh, for Spice and Wolf, but it needed to be crowdfunded. So I believe this was like 2019. And it, in a Twitter post he made literally today, he said, without that crowdfunding campaign doing exceedingly better than we anticipated, we don't think the remake of the anime would have happened. Because. Wow. I believe it is the start of 2019. They crowdfunded and they said, hey, we want to do this. We want to make a, a small Spice and Wolf project, a VR game. We need 30 million yen. That's the goal. And that's like 200,000 right. US or something. Yeah, something like that. And they got 72. Probably would have been like 300,000 at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they got 72 million yen. They got twice. Woo. So I think that's why they made two games, because in the end they did make two. So that love from the, the Spice and Wolf fandom to give them twice as much for a crowdfunding who knows what game, like, that alone just tells you, fuck, there are so many people out there that love Spice and Wolf. And I think you made the comparison of, like, like what was the comparison you made about Holo being the old Marin? Marin, yeah, Marin. from Dress Up Darling. Yes, I did. I did say that. Yeah, like Holo was the waifu of the time, like Marin is the waifu now, which I think is very prompt. The, equi the, the equivalent, yes, the the equivalent, like the one who invaded pop culture at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can imagine that. I think yeah. there's even... I forgot where it was. Um, somewhere in Japan, there's like a sewer... Well, there's a place with sewer covers. or Are there sewer covers? I don't know. Um, yeah. Manholes. Well, I also specifically said, uh, yeah, Marin, because of the, the, the waifu aspect of it, right? You know, because there are like... You could also look at like Freerin. Uh, yeah, yeah. But Freerin's not really a waifu. It's like Marin. That's the one. She's That's like how I am. How I imagine Holo was at the time. Yes, and I, I think you're right because even then, um, yeah, I found here's the thing, uh, Toko Orozawa Sakura Town. I, I'm sorry for my botched pronunciation. Um, they have like a few manholes that have unique uh, anime art on them, and one of them has the front cover of Spice World Volume One on the manhole, like, just nice. on, on the street. Like, I didn't realize just how fucking big Spice and Wolf 
was. And it it fills my heart hot knowing we're getting a season two that will be able to explore more of the story. And I could easily just go through and read the rest of it. And I will read to a certain like a lot of it to a certain extent, but it, it is just another thing being able to experience the anime and being able to experience like mm. not not only the nostalgia mm. factor because like there there are a lot of moments nowadays where I'm like I really need to move past a lot of things I had nostalgia for because like it's almost holding me back in some certain ways. But then I see like Spice and Wolf remake and I'm like holy fuck. Like if that like, well now what am I supposed what, to do? What am I meant to do, guys? What the fuck? What is this? Um, yeah, and, and oh, I saw, I found it. Uh, it ha. So remember how I said they that it happened where the people have done two uh seasons of two like twenty five episodes. Yeah. Okay, I sw- I found it. I found it happened before, and I don't know. I feel I'm like legitimately ashamed of myself because it it happened last year with Eden Zero. Oh. <laughs> two seasons of 25 episodes. Oh. Two seasons of 25 episodes within two years of each other. So I think that's probably what's going to happen with this. It ah. also happened with the Urusei Yatsura reboot, um, which was also good. That. But they weren't 25 episodes. They were like 23 and 22. But who's counting right yep that makes sense uh i'm not counting i can't count um yeah all right i think i've covered all the notes uh, we've talked for okay, well, well, I've before talked... we end before yeah. we end this i want to ask you something sure if you had like here's the thing right if you had to summarize in a you know i guess compared to this hour and 20 minutes we've been recording if you were to summarize in a relatively short amount of time why exactly you like Spice and Wolf so much, how would you do it? I think I enjoy Spice and Wolf predominantly because it caught me at a point of time when I was so new to the world of anime and to this, ver- this type of storytelling. And because the way I grew up, I always had to think a bit differently compared to a lot of people because I had to do a lot of things. Like I, I had to understand a lot more adult themes and all that growing up compared to a lot of other people who could just have regular ass childhoods. And this Spice and Wolf kind of breached that middle ground of enjoying being young and enjoying like having the freedom to do whatever I want with a story that was at the same time catered to that and at the same time mature. It catered to my fascination of economics and like coins and currency. And it also catered to attractive female lead who's very fun and spunky and enjoyable to watch. And it just managed to catch me. It just caught me at the right time where it catered to everything I enjoyed at that point of time. Mm. And seeing it grow from an outside perspective after not being attached to it for a few years after the fact, now going back, seeing just how big the light novel has gotten. I didn't, got, gotten, I didn't know about Wolf and Parchment. Learning about Wolf and Parchment, learning about the VR games, learning about the fact that so many people still love this thing that I thought I only loved back in the day, it just man- has managed to get a fucking hold of me. And it because it, it's such a unique experience that's unlike any other anime I've watched or unlike any other fucking light novel I've read. And I haven't read a lot of night- light novels, mm. to be honest, but it is just such a unique experience that managed to fucking get me at the right time and i love the characters i love the gentle nature of the story because it's not end of uh, it's not an end of the world life threatening thing it has the elements of that with holo being afraid that she's going to that the world is going to pass her by because of her almost dear immortality but it is just such a nice 
relaxing story to come into and you can enjoy the carriage, enjoy the banter, enjoy and have fun with it without it being worrisome. And it is just a nice, comfortable thing to enjoy. So there you go. That's it. There you go. That's, That's the one. It, I hope that was. I hope that was a <laughs> suffice. That's about what answer. I was expecting. Yeah, that, that that was about what I was expecting. Yeah, because um, the main thing I think uh, for me when I look at it now, it's like the. And I said it, like, I think it's all about the relationship between the two characters, like, regardless of, you know, I'm not going to come out remembering the fact that Lawrence, like, inflated the price of a rock to <laughs> prank some kid. Yeah, like, I'm yeah. not going to remember that. No. Um, So, he, I think it's all about the main two characters and their, like, dynamic and their the building and developing of their relationship. So... And, it, you know, it happens with a lot of shows. Like, there are very specific things with whatever type of show it is that you come out remembering. And a lot of the details go by the wayside. And for this, in this case, the things you remember being, like, uh, the relaxed feeling and the the mellow uh, world around them and the character's uh, dynamic being what you come out remembering this one for, it, that's pretty good. Like... It's a, it's a nice thing to come out remembering. Mm-hmm. Um, so I I can see why you like it. Because, I mean, even for me, I didn't... You were into anime before I was. Because the only anime I was watching when I was 12 was Pokemon. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Real. Uh, I didn't even get into actual other anime until, like, I was 14 or 15. So mm-hmm. that was also when I hit puberty, though. So... <laughs> Makes sense. No, you know, um, well, you know, that was a little bit of an exaggeration, obviously, but wow. I didn't, I didn't, I definitely didn't have my growth spurt until I was like 16. But the point <laughs> is like, uh, yeah, like the, it's, it's just, it's a nice show. So I, I totally get it. It's, it's like knowing and especially actually after having read your book, it, it feels like exactly right up your alley. Mm-hmm. So yeah so i I can imagine with like a lot of the other shows i watch and a lot of like (sighs) other media i consume and like you 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 could almost say you can correctly guess a lot of like songs i like and albums i like and artists i like because i like a lot of the edgy fucking grungy shit and that's emphasized with the main character of my book and then yes the relationship dynamic is the more mellow fun back and forth spice and wolf has to offer as well as a few more other serious elements that i've put in there for the plot but that's the thing my story is just kind of like my book that i'm trying to write is just a culmination of everything i love and i'm trying to make that's what it should be yeah i want the pieces to fit together and that's what i'm trying to make happen and you 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 can tell that more than anyone because like i i don't I wouldn't. Yes. I wouldn't say more than uh, more to a lot of people. Like, yeah, I like these bands. I like these shows, and they'd probably get a few notes that uh, they just have a few one note opinions of me as a character from that. Like, I if I listed off genuinely all of the bands and shows. And IPs that I loved, you would see 80% that rock, like heavy metal, fucking dark emo fucking show shit. Like one of my favorite TV shows is Arrow, and that's fucking like dark. Like that, that's dark DC mm. sort of shit. And like not dark, but like it's portrayed as dark. And um, like one of my favorite anime, like. Yeah, the the horny fucking male teenage bullshit of, like, high school DxD or whatever. But then you got the softer side of things that I want. Yeah, won't... but I still like that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're not going to yeah. hear me come judge. <laughs> no, no, no. But, uh, like, I, 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 I so often in the past have been judged for that sort of thing. So I am just... That's why there's always, like, a, a thing I mean, in the It's not of... like I watch it because I get an erection. It's just like, oh, have fun. It's just like, <laughs> booby. But, like, 
I so often in the past have been judged for my interests that I don't talk a lot about that. But then Man, you it, knew some fucking lame people who would judge you for your interests. Dude, that dude, sucks. It, it's like in, one of the worst things someone can do. Yeah, I know, but it's school was a volatile time for to be a fan of anything. Like, it, yep. you, like I, I literally remember tr- the, the first time I tried to make like a um, an AMV, and then I showed one of my mates, and he's just like, "Dude, that's fucking gay." And then I was like, "Oh, okay." And <laughs> I just, uh, it's just like I was just trying to express an interest, my guy, and he and I was fucking ripped into it for it. Like, I was fortunate that I actually did have a few mates that liked anime. It just so happened that Spice and Wolf was the first one that they didn't also have an interest in. So, yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it's it's just weird how that's all played out. But like, I've kept like my genuine love for a show like Spice and Wolf, like just to myself for the longest time. It wasn't really until the remake was announced that I finally was able to be like, "Yo, I love this shit," and. That's that's why I wanted to do this of all things, but yeah, yeah. Uh, I think um, I can tell. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know. I'll, I'll say thank yep. you. Yeah. This is a uh, we we've definitely talked a lot more about Spice and Wolf as a whole rather than just the anime. So I will uh, let's just break it down quickly. Final thoughts on Merchant Meets the Wise Wolf. Uh. I don't know. Watch the seasonal roundup. I'm not ready yet. <laughs> All right, that good segue. What watch watch Gus's seasonal roundup, and you'll get when it comes out. It's not it's not out yet, but it will be out hopefully next week sometime. Yeah, hopefully watch that uh, when that when that happens. I'll give I'll get I will give my succinct thoughts probably around three minutes. It's what I usually do. Yeah. Um. And around three to four minutes. Yes. And I don't think I need to. Repeat myself. I think I've that that the question you posed to me earlier about briefly summarizing yep. it. I think that that answers it for me. Yes. I, I just well, because and you know I wanted that perspective from you because for me coming into this, it's like I'm like even coming out of it, I'm like this is just it's just another show on the list. Add it to the list, complete it. It's not sp- particularly special for me, so I wanted to hear about why you liked it as someone who it is special for. Mm-hmm. So that's why I, I asked you that. No, and and um, I appreciate that. And I, I appreciate that there, there are a few mates out there which I can share those sorts of things with. And with you being someone that so heavily enjoys anime and light novels, it's very easy to describe it, to talk about it with you. Like, I haven't talked to anyone else about, like, Ruby... And shit like that as much as I have with you. And like that that's that's Yeah, you were the one who was like, you should watch Ruby, and all of a sudden I'm like, oh shit, this rules. Oh you fuck it. Um, sick. Yeah, like Yeah. And, and Spice and Wolf is just Yeah, genuinely, if the remake never happened, I probably would wouldn't have like that that love for it wouldn't have been revived. Like it, it genuinely, like I, I saw end of last year, start of this year. The remake was announced, and I just remembered, like, uh, holy fuck, Spice and Wolf. Like, that was just that. Is back. We are so back. So, I, I, I'm, so I'm, hap- I'm, I'm happy it is back, because I, it actually did affect me and my writing. Like, I think it was another one of those things that just pushed me to finish writing, because I remembered how much I enjoyed that like this method of storytelling and i was like i want to exp- like th- that fits the dynamic of zane and yulia from my book fairly well and i was like you know what i will replicate that in my own way i will sh- i will demonstrate a similar relationship because that fits them in my mind so yeah it 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 has meant a lot to me coming back so i i am keen for season 2 i'm going to see i'm excited to see how much they cover I am excited to just see more of Lawrence and Hollow, and I can't wait for all my and shit. And if it's only 12 episodes, everyone can laugh at me. 
if the it's, end. If it's only 12 episodes, I will be fine with that. If you want a glimpse into the future, watch the second half of season two of the original. Since that did cover volume five. So if you kind of want a glimpse of the future, go back in time in a weird way. Or just read the fucking I will novels, not be do- you know. Yeah. I will not be doing that. <laughs> that's 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 i'm just gonna wait fair. on the fucking yeah i'm just gonna wait on season two yeah com- um, completely valid i have other things to do <laughs> <laughs> i have more things i need to just I have 40 more to and i'm gonna watch this year <laughs> this season i mean that's it that's it that is what's about to happen to me but yeah, i'm ready for it that's what i man. sign up for i love it i love this shit <laughs> i just finished you know what i just finished yesterday what that one deer anime. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I saw fucking snippets of that on Twitter. Shit is that peak. looks. Is it peak or is it stupidly no. peak? Like it's it's actually most one of the most ridiculous shows by far I've ever seen. Good. I'm glad to hear that. It looks stupid. Yeah. So it was it it was okay. The deer joke it it kind of got old towards the end, but the first few episodes genuinely had me cackling. <laughs> I was it was it was funny but not I don't know if it was because they wanted me to it was just like the way they draw the main the main character like there's just the way they draw her is ridiculous like I the the things that had me laughing hard were like when she was just standing there looking stupid like that was it it was it wasn't because of any of the jokes they set up which are funny but like yeah I I was just the way they draw her is ridiculous and I was like laughing <laughs> very wonderful it, very goofy but yeah i'm I'm still finishing up a lot of the shows from this season so i can be ready <clears throat> well we we appreciate your hard work we appreciate your service yeah and i uh, i appreciate that's you. what it is like you know if, if you could like if if anyone out there is ever wondering like oh i was mildly interested in like because I, I haven't really ever nailed down an a exact purpose for the seasonal roundup videos, but now I feel like I have it because it's like sometimes I think people see shows that happen in a season like, oh, that looks kind of interesting. If you're ever wondering if it is interesting, watch the seasonal roundup and watch me talk about it because I will tell you that's exactly why I go into thinking like this is here's a show that I watched. Is it actually interesting? Should you go out of your way to go back and watch it if you are interested? That's what I'm trying to that's what I'm trying to do. So. If you have that thought about a show, go watch the seasonal roundup to which season it's from, and I'll tell you. There you go. That's there my plug. Go. Good promotion. And there yeah, I, I, I think that's that's all we have to cover. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, I know a lot of it was just me talking about my history with this shit, but um, I hope... Uh, that's what it's all very, about. That's yeah. why we're here. I, I hope at the very least our comparison, well, the comparisons to the original anime and our uh, summary of this reboot of this incredible show uh, was enough to satisfy you. Uh, very fun, very cute, very wholesome, very good shit. Um, would you like to do <laughs> the... Na- <laughs> naked wolf girl naked wolf girl <laughs> um uh, okay yeah outro. yeah outro um i remember i remember how to do the outro um the this was on youtube and probably also on spotify so if you want to follow us on twitter uh or <laughs> well no it's twitter uh twitter or uh if you want to find us on youtube or spotify wherever you came from i don't know there's probably links somewhere in the description or on our channel page wherever follow us for updates and stuff about our activities we're doing a lot of gaming stuff uh playing episode i guess of course and uh hypertorian eyes shining pearl nuzlocke will be continuing next week um the uh if for some reason you want to email us it's on our page find it firestorm productions to at gmail.com i don't maybe you can tell me i'm a loser uh something like that um and uh make sure to hit that like button and subscribe so you could see more of these when we do them every six months bye <laughs> bye